Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do a beautiful painting with a little pink tree right in the middle, maybe a couple of pink trees. Anyway, it should be a lot of fun. And if you're enjoying this and you're looking forward to seeing it and you'd like to see more, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. All right, let's get started. Now, as usual, when we acrylic paint, I've got the canvas already tinted. This time I used a little orange on top, a little purple on the bottom, blended them together. This is, of course, dry. I put a lot of foundation medium. That's what I have here in this cup. I actually would show you the bottle, but it's over on the shelf because I'm using it to kind of fill some space. I still haven't figured out what I want to put on the shelves. I mean, art supplies, of course, but I don't know. I got to get a frame for that painting. Still haven't got around to doing that. There. Let's just fill in. Fill in over here too. Just, just areas because I'm going to have large clouds. So there's just no need to paint everything in. You know, I've mixed up a nice purple color and we really, we didn't do, didn't do much blue. So everywhere else we're going to need some clouds, obviously. That's too much paint. We're going to use a dry brush. Is that dry? Ooh, that's a little tacky. Last thing we want to do is cause a problem. Acrylics paint well when there's very wet and then very wet and you blend them together or when there's completely dry and then you can blend your wet right over top. They are not so good when you try to layer wet over almost dry. It usually turns out really bad because <laughs> what it does is it lifts the paint off that's, you know, sort of dry and you go right back down to your toned canvas, which is one of the reasons I tone my canvas. So when I push through, I actually get some of that showing and I like that very much. So something to, something to think about. Got to be aware of whether your acrylics are dry or not. With oils, it doesn't matter because it's always wet. <laughs> there. See, see how you're forming the cloud? I'm spending a long time on that cloud because I'm talking and not really focusing. I do that, don't I? I love that orange that's coming through and we didn't even have to, we didn't have to do anything. It just sort of happened because we built that color into the underpainting. I like that. So I push down. It's just in, as we were talking here, it's already drying up. So you push down real hard and you get those beautiful edges. Cool. So I'm just going to keep doing this. Let me see. Keep going. Here's my palette. Ah, it's running out. It's not running out so much as it's drying. I got my handy mister bottle going. You don't want to mist the canvas when it's wet. Uh, what it'll do is it'll, it'll kind of bead up on there. You can do it when it's dry, just not when it's wet. That's pretty. That's going to be really good, actually. I'm using my number four bristle brush. There. Cool. So just working down, adding those little layers. That's how you get those subtle effects. So let me finish this. I just got a little bit more to do than let's jump to the highlight, which will be more interesting anyways. Now, most of the sky is, is dry. It's it's tacky again, and I'm being really careful, but you know, I just don't want to wait on it to dry. I guess I'm being a little bit impatient today. That's okay. Sometimes it's, sometimes it doesn't hurt. We'll see. I want to, I want to go ahead and highlight these clouds. You know, I guess it's just that I'm excited about this painting. These, these paintings, which are really cheerful, you know, like with the pink trees, I don't know, just something about them that you guys t seem to love. I always enjoy doing it. They always come out great. I don't think I, I can't remember a, a painting with a pink tree that I didn't just really enjoy. All right, that looks decent. As we go back, I'm gonna, well, that was a little more pink than I wanted, but I'm gonna leave it. It might tie in with our trees and it looks really nice against the blue. There. Cool. So that sort of comes down, yes. Oh yeah. Now we've got another layer right here. See that? That that's a, a negative space. You want to leave those. Cool. So I'm just scrubbing that, and I should probably get out my little round brush, my tapered round, which is what I designed for clouds. <laughs> but it's okay. I'm gonna use this one for now because it's in my hand. I'll probably change to it when we go to put the, the finishing details on these clouds. This is kind of just getting them roughed in. They're still, 
you know, they're still pretty rough. They're not, they're not getting real smooth or anything yet. With acrylics and clouds, you pretty much have to work them with the dry brush blending technique. There's not much other choice uh, unless you just get really fast at painting clouds and you can beat that quick dry time. But if you're like the rest of us, you probably want to use dry brush blending. There. I like that kind of white on the outside. I really think that that brightens this whole area up. We've got our big pink trees here, so you know, a lot of it is going to get covered. Maybe we shouldn't even spend this much time on it. It's just good practice, you know? And I want this misty atmosphere to my painting. You know, there, it's probably good. You know, we really don't want, we want to go over here where we can see it. <laughs> there, so. I'm just scrubbing around. See that? I can change the direction of my hands, just scrubbing. Cool. Yeah, not too much back up in here. Maybe a little, you know what? I'm gonna get a little more paint. I should get a little touch of our foundation medium. There. And work those clouds in. So now I've got just a little bit of light pink on my custom tapered brush. This is the, this is the one for clouds. And what we're going to do is come in with the, with the edge of the brush and just outline these clouds a little. But what's great is this brush tends to make a nice soft edge. It's a soft brush and the, the bristles are cut in such a, I've got a little too much paint, cut in such a way that it just blends really dry brush blends really easily. There, it's a really short, but really, really fat brush. And it just, it blends clouds really well in sun rays. Any, anything with the dry brush blending, kind of the scrubbing action, this is the best brush, it's my favorite. Makes it easy. And anything we can do to save it an extra minute, you know, of, of effort, we like to do it. This brush seems to, to save me time. There, that's cool. I like that very much. A couple of sharp edges won't hurt anything. It's a fairly soft sky. So a couple of harder edges to these clouds is not a big deal. There's, I know there's, there's not too many. Of course, that's always a danger when you paint acrylics, isn't it? Just like, you know, mud for oils, uh, sharp edges for acrylics. It's pretty much the same, the same problem, just different medium, right? Well, you know what I mean by the same problem. It's like the opposite problem. But. Each one, that's the big problem, I should say. <laughs> there. Cool, that, that, that works. That's really pretty. Oh, that little bit of that blue is kind of coming through. That's that lifting away because it wasn't fully dry thing, but we're gonna just roll with it. All right. A little more, let's get over to this cloud and drop in a few beautiful little spots of highlight. You can wipe the brush and then kind of glaze it back. I spent the last couple of minutes just putting in a sketch. You know, it wasn't minutes, it was more like a couple of seconds. Anyway, I've still got my uh, custom tapered round brush going and I'm going to add in, using scrubbing strokes, I'm gonna add in some distant foggy trees. If this was oil, you just go right in there and, and blend it and it would all be great. Because this is acrylic, I had to mix up a color that was extremely light and just do a little bit of scrubbing and kind of allow it to just feel like part of the background. So just something to think of. All right, here we go. Get a little bit of our kind of a, a, a sky-ish color going. Okay, and what I'm gonna do with that is place that on the outside edge. So I've got green on the outside and that kind of sky color toward the, did I say that wrong? You know what I mean? Get us a nice transition. <laughs> yeah, you know, we're okay. There, that looks pretty good. Maybe, you know, I got a big tree there. Helps to pre-plan your painting. You know where you're gonna go. Very foggy back here, very soft. I think that's gonna just give us a nice base for, let's face it, what is the most important part of the painting? Our beautiful tree and our small little barn. And what's great about this barn, it's so easy because 
it's old and it's gonna be kind of abandoned, just overgrown, kind of just hiding back in there. And it's gonna be misty. So I don't have to worry about angles. That's kind of cool. I like that softness. People are gonna think this is an oil painting with all this softness that we've got going on. How fun. Over here maybe, got some trees, but you see how you can just, oh, I'm gonna leave that. See that misty, kind of orangey misty stuff? I'm gonna leave that. At least leave it for a little while. The trees may cover it, but leave it for a little while. If it shows through, then great. What a bonus. People will pay extra <laughs> for that detail. Yeah, that looks decent, doesn't it? Cool. Kind of stand back. I like to stand back. These have long handles. You know, I should actually be way back here for doing stuff like this. We have long handles for a reason. There. Very, very nice. Okay. Tell you what, let's go ahead and get that big tree. I'm going to, no, I'm not going to continue using it. I'm going to put it in the water, dip it in the water, and then set it down on the table. That'll keep it from drying out as long as you don't go have lunch or something. There. Then if you want to get right back to it, you still even have that color in the brush. So that's good. I'm going to grab a little green, black, maybe some yellow. Maybe a little bit of our yellow ochre light. That's a nice, beautiful, shiny yellow ochre. Very pretty. Let's see what that does. Well, it's not a bad color, is it? I like that. I, I kind of want to see my, my pretty little um, cloud areas through there, so I won't overdo. Anywhere where it's not as interesting, you can put more of this. Just tap it right in. Yeah, that's, that's looking decent, isn't it? Now, oh, I kind of covered up my cloud. Oh, well, we practiced. We learned how to make a cloud. We got better at making clouds. Each cloud you get better, even, even me. Unless, of course, you don't do well. But then you still learn. You still get better, even if you don't do well and you have to paint over it. There, not that we would know anything about that. <laughs> it happens every once in a while, doesn't it all? I'll be doing something. We'll come back and it'll be all different it's because I changed my mind. <laughs> all right. That's looking really good. Nice bit of dark, nice bit of contrast. Just an overall effective little tree. And this is the number four bristle brush that we're using. Kind of tap that in and shape and form that little land area around the house even with these shrubs. We can do that right here. I got some of our vivid sap green. I, I purposely made these colors in acrylic a little more saturated, a little more vivid and bright and cheery than the oil paints because acrylics dry out about a shade or two darker. And I noticed that sometimes my acrylic paintings in the beginning when I was learning how to do this would be kind of dark and kind of dull and I didn't like that. So the answer, get paints that are a little more vibrant and it helps. So that or you can just, you know, mix them up differently, but it helped me. So. There you go. Slightly more vivid colors than we use in oil. Get a slightly better result. At least I do. Okay, we're gonna overgrow. This is gonna be overgrown, but we'll do that in a minute. I'm just kind of knocking that edge out. Cool, let's run around. I'm just gonna continue. That's a little too bright. I'm just gonna continue painting shrubs and stuff. Nothing crazy and we'll get right back to something slightly more interesting. <laughs> now I'm gonna go ahead and underpaint the land back here. Got a kind of a nice rolling hill going in this direction. I'm of course using, well, not of course, I, but today I'm using my little flat brush. It really works well, it's soft, really made for blending. But it's soft and it, it paints this on nice. Now, since it is used for blending, really blending skies, but this is similar. I'm gonna go ahead and put some dark here at the bottom while it's still very wet. And I've got about 30 seconds here, <laughs> a little more than that, but not much to blend this all together. See that and make it smooth, very similar to the way you would paint a sky, kind of using overlapping strokes, kind of mushing it in. The good news is you just don't have to worry about your brush strokes as much because there can be some texture in the land, but not so much in the sky. That looks actually really good. I don't want, I don't want to go crazy. I want this to look maybe not man-made, but 
but look like something that somebody wouldn't mind building around. Not like this big ginormous river, but like a small, small little pond. Like you could almost jump across it or, you know, maybe two steps. But I don't want it to look crazy because there's a, a, a building, a little shack pretty close to it. All right, a little, little of our umber would actually, oh no, some red too. My paints are drying, so I'm gonna squirt a little water out here in a minute. But I want a little red in the foreground. Red is a foreground color and it looks really pretty there. So let's do that. Maybe not too early to start. Maybe a little sand under the water there. Good. Okay, maybe back to see how I just, I just bounce around. And then maybe I'll squirt out some more paint here in a, in a little while when we get to our highlighting phase. But right now I'm just kind of allowing the palette to be not so much muddy, but just mixed together. Combining all the colors and getting different effects. Cool, maybe a little darker. You know what, here, let me show you. So here's my mister bottle. Again, I'm just gonna lightly mist. Make sure you don't get any, any especially down here. Wouldn't hurt it up here. I'm always mixing my foundation medium in. Just a, just the corner of the brush, that's all it takes. It doesn't take much. It just takes a small amount. Helps the paint to flow really well. And if you add it, if you add quite a bit of it, it actually gives it a beautiful little shine, almost like an oil paint shine. There. Kind of soften some transition areas. That looks pretty, pretty good. Pretty good for a big wide blending brush. I think it did a really nice job. Fill in right there with something. All right, pretty, pretty much ready to, to block in the big trees, I think. You know, one thing before we do the trees, I, I was just looking at it and thought, oops, better get this done, is I wanna get a little highlight, or at least light. It's not necessarily the final highlight, but I wanna get some light established behind these trees before we stick them in, that's all. Just just thought it'd be easier now than later. You know me, I, I don't, I'm the one guy that doesn't, doesn't mind painting around trees. I do that all the time, but I just thought it might be easier to get a little bit of the light at least established first. And you know me, I'm gonna be painting around trees, <laughs> but it's okay. This is, a, this is a good start. Nice and bright. In fact, I want almost pure white back there, I think, when we're finally done with this. But that's quite a ways. We've got quite a ways to go. It, it seems like it's going fast right now, but I, I think it's not. <laughs> I think that, I think that the more detailed parts are definitely coming. Now I'm gonna go ahead and block in our little shack, our little barn or cabin, whatever it is. Maybe a little barn? I don't know. I think in, in, when I was planning this whole painting out, I was thinking a barn, but now that I see it in the actual painting, not so sure. More like a little shack. And you know what? It's one of those situations where it's whatever your viewer thinks it is. I can't tell you how many times that happens to me. And uh, if you've done much, much painting at all, you know what I'm talking about. And hopefully you just roll with it because that's what I do. Somebody thinks it's whatever it is. That's, yep, that's what it is. <laughs> just shake your head like that's the way you planned it. Because it just in the end doesn't make any difference. It's whatever your viewer thinks. And that's great. All right, now that went in so smooth. Let's brighten that up. I want this nice grayish. We got so many pretty colors. I, I like the idea of having kind of a, a weathered, almost my palette gray. It's kind of a contrast to that. Maybe even just a, a touch of ooh, a color, like a red or something, some leftover old paint maybe, I don't know. Very weathered and very overgrown. So kind of bring that down. Oh, I like that kind of green mixed in there. That's cool. There, good underpainting. Good underpainting will really help you. So spend that extra second on the underpainting because it pays off. Cool. And we'll certainly highlight later. This is, this is just a quickie underpainting. Nothing too, nothing too crazy. Even though it's a good underpainting, it's pretty quick. And of course I'm using my stiff natural bristle brush 
for this because it gives me those lines. And then we'll change to our synthetic brush, number six synthetic. And then we can kind of cut in the details, but that's going to happen later. I want to get to those trees. I put them off. I've done a couple of steps that I wasn't even planning. I was going to get those trees in pretty early. So let's, let's go ahead and do that next. So now I've got a nice dark color. A <laughs> little bit of red left I have is in there and some black and brown. Time to squirt out more paint. But anyway, a little foundation medium too. All right. I've went ahead and established where I wanted my tree trunks to, to start. And I'm going to, this is still the bristle brush. You could certainly do this with a synthetic brush, the micro filbert, pretty much anything that you want and are most comfortable with would be the correct choice. For me, I had it in my hand, and so it's the correct choice. <laughs> there. See, we're definitely going to need to highlight around these trees. But it was nice to have that light at least established back there so we don't have to do the whole thing. We can just kind of do areas of highlight back there. I know the, the rule for traditional proper art is to, is to start from the back and work forward, and I certainly understand why, because it, then you're not having to paint around stuff. But for me personally, and obviously everybody's going to have different thoughts on that. And that's cool. You do what works for you. But for me, this is what works, which is painting around stuff. I don't lose much time. And I feel like I get a, a more educated, you know, I'm more educated on how the painting's going to look. Does that make sense? You know, I, I know where my lights are. I know where my darks are. It's a big dark spot. And I might want a really nice bright highlight near it. I don't know, just something, something that makes me more comfortable. So there you go. Maybe this one here lots of medium and even a little water to thin it down slightly more. There. I like that rough texture that you get almost that soft edge. And then if you highlight with a synthetic brush, then you'll have sharp and soft edges all, all in one tree. Be kind of interesting, wouldn't it? Maybe make these just a bit taller, but we can do that with the leaves. We, we can certainly make it taller with the leaves and then just connect it later. That one's a little, <laughs> little thick. We'll definitely cover that one. But because these are acrylics, they'll dry quick and we can do that without worrying about mud. I mean, I would do it in oils anyways, but at least I don't have to even think about the mud. Advantages and disadvantages. That's, I love the question, you know, what medium should I start with? Oh, that has got to be one of the hardest questions to answer. I don't really have a good answer. Kind of just, you have to weigh the pros and cons for yourself and maybe try them both. I don't know. <laughs> they're both, they're both good. And you can both, you know, with both, you can do amazing paintings. That's enough limbs. We'll do more with the liner brush, but that sure does give us a good start. I, I tell you what though, I don't like where they stop. I wish it was back further. Not quite so close to the edge of the pond. So we're going to make a change. That's, it's that easy. Just push them right back where you want them to, to be. Make that one a little thicker. Kind of just playing around with it. So it's just the way that you'd like it. And then a couple of, couple of shadows maybe. See that just kind of scumble them in. Next I'm going to go ahead and place on some of the leaves here to this tree. Or maybe the little flowers. I don't know what these are. Doesn't matter. It's really nice looking. I guess they're flowers, aren't they? is pretty cool. You want to get quite a few of them. I think that that makes it feel a little more interesting. However, I don't want a lot in this particular round. I want to do several rounds of these things, some that are very dark and some that are kind of light and everywhere in between. Yeah, that looks pretty decent, doesn't it? Okay, just kind of lightly building out these little trees. I'm looking at the negative space areas. That's obviously very important. Here's my palette. See, I had to squirt out some more paint. I went ahead and just kind of cleaned it up a bit. That way, when we do highlights, we get a little bit of a brighter color. You know, you won't get mud. Plus I was out of, I was out of most of them. All right, let me wipe that brush out, continue always changing the color. It's very easy to come in with one color and try to do the whole thing. And I don't think it'll come out near as good if you do it that way. The light's coming across like this today. So some of the more slightly darker ones can be on the left. 
Good, and then we won't do the whole thing with this brush. We will change our brushes very quickly here. And definitely do it with a different brush. So now I'm gonna go ahead and drop on some lighter pink ones the exact same way. Still using this number four bristle brush, flat brush. This is the stiff natural bristle one, not the synthetic. And that's important because the synthetic one wouldn't give you, wouldn't give you little individual ones like this. It would give you nice lines, which is okay if you're not painting leaves. <laughs> there, well, at least not far away leaves. I guess it's pretty good for close up leaves, isn't it? All right, let's see, maybe right here. I'm just picking out these little spots and dropping them in. It's not really that big of a deal. You can kind of, kind of stick them wherever you want. It's not that important. The only thing is you got to go slow because if you go fast, like I started to do there, they tend to become clumpy. The slower and softer you go, the nicer it tends to look. That's the, that's kind of the secret to that. Cool. Yep, that's looking nice. Let's keep going because this is going so nice. So nice. Right up in here. I'm just going to keep doing this and we'll do something else. Kind of help them become more detailed with the next step. I'm just filling in a little bit of water down here. Just threw some wet pink down. It's still wet. I'm going to put some wet green and then you can blend them together. The moment this sets up and dries, you're going to have to stop and then switch to your dry brush blending technique. Cool. But for this second, it's actually working. I need some blue and some white. And actually a little bit of our pink is okay in that. And that sort of mimics the sky. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's really far away. Nobody's going to notice. <laughs> Just has to sort of get close. Cool. All right, there's some sky. Maybe there's some sky. So you can just pop your sky holes right in. Pretty quick and easy. Maybe there's a little sky right there. And then right, while everything's wet, drag across to blend. Drag across very lightly to blend. You don't want to, you don't want to overdo. This paint's pretty heavy body for acrylic, but still, you could pull it around more than you want if you're, if you push too hard. That looks pretty good right there, actually. And maybe a couple more green reflections right along the side while everything's still blending. Great. So if you can do your water while it's all wet, this it's as easy as this. It'll take you a little longer if it dries, but it's still pretty simple. Now it's time to start working on some extra bushes here. You see, I took just a second, took some brown, and I added some shadow cracks just like this. Also added the roof. Super easy. Just literally two seconds. In fact, I'll throw some shadow cracks up in here as well. Would be maybe not a bad thing. I think we'll put some shingles on there in a minute. But I want to put these bushes back just a little more. I kind of ate them up, and now they get to come back. Right there, maybe. Yep. This area is a little interesting. We kind of have to figure out how to make a nice soft transition here. Maybe they go back up this side. That could be cool. That could work right there. Maybe make sure that bottom is soft Something like that. That's important, you know? Okay. That helps. Okay, much better. And then way, way, way overgrown. Great. As far as this area over here, way overgrown. Nice. Mostly can't hardly see that roof. That's perfect. That's what we want. tell you what, right up in here. I want it a little darker. Just to give me that contrast. Wipe out the brush. And just tap upward. Now the next thing that we're going to do up here is highlight this green tree. And I love the contrast between the green and the pink there. However, we do need to take some of this beautiful pink and figure out how to incorporate it here. Maybe some flowers growing up the up the vines here or whatever. I don't know. We'll figure out some way to incorporate it. That's very important to me that we do that. 
but here I'm just tapping. Now, as soon as we're done with kind of getting this, at least the first highlight done, what we'll do is we'll come back with our micro filbert brush and put some more leaf texture in. I still haven't done that over here. I need to do that. All right, now this one's behind this little shack here. So we will not bring the green branches over. That's important. Just to, you know, it's not important so much for the painting, it's important to think about it and then keep with it if that's what you want. Okay, right there, that's looking, looking like a nice shiny little tree. Lots of sunlight, cool. But there's still room to highlight, you know, we still haven't gone as bright as we can go. We can still build it up a little more. I'm gonna take this green over here just continue to highlight. It's a little bright for that spot, but it's acrylics, it'll dry darker, so I'm not too concerned about it. We just won't highlight it again, maybe. Nice. Just continue to add these little bits in. And of course we got some grass. We should start thinking about that grass up in here. Some different textured, you know, bushes and, and just things on the ground. Okay. Maybe even, I'm some out of white again. I need to need squirt some more out, but maybe some blue into this and it gives us just a different shade of green. It's kind of a cool green, which may be very nice. Mm, this is all fairly close up, so that's why I'm kind of getting a little more large, a little more detailed here. I'm just going to continue doing the same thing. Lots of little blades of grass, lots of layers, and certainly changing the color quite a bit. Maybe a couple more leaves right in here. I was trying to do like a big large leafed plant. That looks cool. With some little yellow flowers. Now I've just spent the last few minutes sort of dotting on these little leaves. And I'm doing quite a few more. I've also stopped and put some branches in and now I'm covering those branches up using the same little dotted leaf effect, you know, little comma strokes. And each one of course touches another and that makes it look kind of together, you know, makes it look like part of the tree. It's important. All right. Just push those limbs right back. I've also went ahead and just did a little more work here, just brightening up the foreground, the same exact stuff we've been doing. Just more of it makes it a little brighter. And we'll probably want to brighten the foreground again. So that's kind of, that's the plan at least. You know how, you know how things go to plan almost every time, right? <laughs> yeah. I just like building up this bright color, making them a little bit more cheery and just a little more, you know, kind of like the feature of the painting, almost pure white on some of these, not, not all, but just some of these outside corner ones. Yeah. That looks decent, doesn't it? Maybe a little out on this one, really get some nice bright stuff going. Separate those trees to that nice separation area. That's important. Just lots of leaves. Now, the kind of secret or the key to this painting, I think, is going to be just doing a lot of detail. So I'm going to continue here. And hopefully this won't be too slow and tedious, but I'm going to continue painting on lots of detail. See that I've got, I've got these bushes pretty much just smashed in, you know, with the, the brush. So now I'm kind of refining them with these little dabs and touches. See that you can get the Get the leaves kind of growing around. That looks cool. This one's kind of out on the edge here. So let's bring it over. Oh, that's pretty. I like that yellow. Very pretty. It's starting to really get bright. That'll help to draw the eye in toward the painting, won't it? Makes a big difference. Yeah. Maybe just a couple of darker leaves in there. Would be a good thing. See that? Just dabble. Oh, those are not very dark. A couple of nice. Oh, there's some nice. I just grabbed some of our vivid sap green and just tossed it right in without mixing it with anything else. I like the way that looks. Kind of gives it a little 
nice, nice feeling of green and a little black and then back to our lights and you kind of blend it all together so it doesn't look out of place. That's kind of how you work in those little bushes. Okay. Now, you got to look around and see, maybe, maybe we want, see I had a plant going here, kind of ended up losing it and all of this. Maybe we'll try to bring it back. I tried to have a little flowering thing there. See how that really kind of helps to, kind of helps to bring a little more interest to the foreground. I like that. And there you go. A couple of them are kind of overlapping like that. I think that looks good. And then perhaps we'll get a little, I don't know, a little green and just drop on these little large kind of fern like leaves or whatever this is going on here. You maybe need to little, add a little, huh? you may need to add a little foundation medium, depending on how, how well this uh, covers. Okay. And then let's do a different kind of a bush right here, just by tapping and kind of stippling with the Micro filbert. This is all I'm using for now. It's just the micro filbert. I will get the liner brush out here very quick because in acrylics you can get the liner brush out whenever you want because it'll dry super quick. It doesn't matter. Of course, if you get if it's oils, you get out the liner brush and everything becomes very thin and watery, and then you, you're pretty much done. So you get it out at the very very last minute. Yeah, that's starting to look a little more detailed though. We've got these sharp edges and we still have these fuzzy edges here. A couple of extra what feels like leaves or something, bushes growing in there, maybe another. A couple of tall there. Oh, that looks good. That really does. And we'll highlight a couple of those. See how you just kind of piddle around and it just takes a little time when you do stuff like this. Certain things are fast and other things, not so much. There, but if you're slightly patient with it, it comes out great. Just slightly. You don't have to be really patient. <laughs> yeah. All right. Right up in here. Ooh, let's get rid of that color. I don't want green. I want yellow. And I want to do some flowers. I did some flowers over there, but I want to do some over here. And I'll show you how I did them just by touching and kind of dabbing. You get these beautiful yellow wildflowers. Lots of yellow, but we're gonna very quickly introduce some pink on this side. There, so I just dabble in those little wildflowers. Okay, wipe that brush. Here's some pink. And start getting some pink action. I don't know what kind of flowers these are or, or what, but let's just get them in because they'll look really nice having that pink tied in. Very important, very important on this one too. So now I'm just placing in some flowers in the foreground and also a little more in the background, just trying to get a little more color to this whole painting. It really feels like spring, doesn't it? I know here it's warming up, which is kind of fun. So I don't know, just a good time for a spring painting, isn't it? Nice, look at that. Okay, and then as we go out, let's go ahead and get brighter. There, now, now that I'm looking at this whole thing, I think the water is too dark, so I'll probably lighten that in a minute. In a minute. Just take me, a, just take me a second though. It's not a big, not a big deal. I do like these little white flowers though. I still gotta get that liner brush out. There. Of course, we can always add more white ones. I'm just, just throwing a few in here for now. But look how nice and bright the foreground is becoming. Of course, smaller strokes toward the background. There. Let's see, maybe there. Yeah, let's, let's stick one here. It'll be fun. Just have a couple more right in this area. You don't want to clog it up too much, but it's nice to integrate a few in the yellow ones. There's some just pure white 
I'm gonna glop it on fairly thick so that when it dries, it'll stay bright. Nice. And kind of some transition sizes right there, maybe some yellow ones that kind of help us transition back into the really small ones. So I was thinking it'd be interesting to add just a little fog right here in the background. And that's super easy. I've got my tapered round brush. Well, it's easy because we got this brush, right? And I'm just going to glaze this right on. Super, super thin paint. And also, you can't even see it on my brush. That's how little I'm using. And you use it kind of overhand and just light circles and it comes right off. What's great is your detail underneath will still be there. If you use just a little bit of paint, it won't cover it up and you'll get a really nice effect. You know, all your highlights, all your shadows, they'll all be there. But it'll look like there's a little mist floating right over top of them. And I like that. Mm. A bit back here, maybe. Yes. Right over. Look at this right over. Don't push too hard though. Just nice light push right over all that stuff in the background. Just a light touch is all it takes. You don't need to grind it in in case you need to wipe it off. It'll be kind of, if it's stuck really well onto the canvas, a little harder to wipe off, but you can actually just take a wet rag really quick and very light and just kind of, just kind of lift it off if you don't like it. Nice. Love the way that that's starting to look. Just build it up in layers. There's no prize for, you know, doing this in the first try. Just build it in layers. Maybe a little bit. Oh, we should actually use this to lighten the water. All of your pink and your shadows and highlights, all, it'll all stay. It just becomes a little more misty, a little lighter. And I like that. We can, we can colorize it again if we need to, but we may not need to. Now I'm going to finish up this water area with one last glaze of just white. And what that's going to do is push back these little tiny, I just did some tiny reflections real quick, mirrored reflections with brown and black. I'll just push them into the painting a little better. And that's it. It takes several steps to build up water when you're painting acrylics because it dries so quick. But once you do those few steps, it looks great, doesn't it? It looks very convincing. That's it, just softens them back a little. All right, let's get the liner brush out. So I've got my liner brush, I got some water, I actually got some clean water over here on my left. And I've had to squirt out more paints. Again, that's something that you have to do with acrylics, you know? You have to kind of stop and reset your palette depending on how long your day is going. <laughs> and I do recommend only squirting out little tiny blobs of paint because then you waste less. The last thing you want to do is throw away any paint, right? So you'll waste less if you just put out small amounts, keep your tubes handy, just squirt out a little more as you need it. It certainly doesn't take very long. I think it's well worth it, but you can sort of set up your, you set up your studio however you need to for you, right? You may need to just squirt out a lot of paint and keep misting it and hope it stays I just, I always forget to mist it. So here's a nice kind of a, a blue green. So I just set out all my colors again, probably won't end up using all of that, but I wanted to make sure that I had, you know, enough to work with. But if you're finishing up the painting, you could squirt out just one or two colors, whatever you're using is fine. There, get these nice little blades of grass going. I don't want to bury my flowers too much at all. So I'm going to be subtle with this. I like my flowers and I actually like the way that the foreground is turning out. So I don't want to make it all muddy or kind of, you know, too jumbled in here. Just do some grasses underneath the flowers, a few over top, just, you know, there is a nice spot, maybe right here. Do some grass over the flowers to make them feel like they're part of the painting. But otherwise, mm, don't overdo. <laughs> there, some brighter ones, some darker ones. Of course, always a good thing to have a variety, isn't it? Yeah. 
get some nice bright ones right outside over top of this water. I think that'll help push it back. Oops, not very bright, is it? Ooh, that's gonna be better. So anyway, this is that contrast kicking in. You wanna have a lot of contrast when you do this. See that? So much of the time we stop short of this point. We won't go and get it nice and bright. You kind of get it mid-tone, you say, well, I'm done. Don't be done. <laughs> get some contrast in there. Maybe a couple of dots with the liner brush. The liner brush, just because it's so long and, and kind of, you know, bendy. I don't know how else really to say it. Flexible. Ooh, there's a better word. That sounds like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's nice and long and flexible, and it gives you these these little dots that kind of have that frayed edge. I like that very much. It gives you quick and easy kind of seed pods or grass textures. All right. There, that's really helping to build this area up. Now over here is pretty subtle. So I think we should maybe make it a little sharper. We'll just continue doing the same thing, adding lots and lots of grass. See that? Just building them up. Some that are darker and some that are quite a bit lighter. Definitely do your best to keep that water in there. It does dry very quickly. Especially if you got, you know, something like the air conditioner going or the heater or a fan. I don't know. If it just tends to dry really quick. There. Too bright i'm almost getting too bright there but it may dry out just fine we'll see so anyway playing around with this kind of just get quiet and relaxed and keep going take a step back every once in a while to about six feet away what am i doing there <laughs> and make sure that it's going the way that you want it to go don't get them too big like i did <laughs> it is easy to it's easy to correct those little problems though Maybe bring a few right over the water would be interesting. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun, I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and Brushline. Thanks for watching.